soon. No, thank, thank you. Oh, that's, that's way too early for applause, even if it is coming from you, Lady Barton. Thank you. Good evening. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you all. My name's James Valentine. I'm from uh, ABC Radio Sydney Breakfast. I do a breakfast shift on uh, ABC Radio Sydney, which means I'm up at uh, quarter to four. So this for me is like late night party. <laughs> Oh, bad. I'm up at six. This is incredible. So we're going to have a really great night together. It's a, it's a fabulous thing. Have you been to one of these before? Funding Network or any of these? They're really good. It's got a really great spirit. You're going to hear some great stories <clears throat> and we're going, to, we're going to do some good work. So I sit, sit back, enjoy. You're going to have a wonderful time. Now, a couple of little technical things for me to deal with just before we officially get going. We're both here and online. So just while we bring those things together, uh, this you know, hybrid event that we've got, let me just run through a few things here. Um, there will be, the drinks waiter will come round at some point, so don't worry if you know, the, the drinks will be refilled. Uh, now we've got a lovely group logged on virtually, so we will be doing things a little bit differently um, to make it easier for them to follow. One of these things I'd like you to do is just wait for a microphone to get to you when we get to the pledging part. You're not quite clear what I mean by that. We will explain the pledging part. But you'll get a microphone, you say your name, you pledge. So if you wait for the mic, that'll be good. Uh, when I get the green light from the AV team, I'll start. And so I'm just looking for a green. That looks like a green light. That's it. We're racing. Horses are set and off we go. Well, hello. Hello here. Hello to everyone at home. <laughs> say hello to them. Fantastic. Welcome to, to, uh, to Connect for Youth supporting the incredible work of the Sir David Mountain... I can't speak tonight. Uh, it's a breakfast thing, I'm falling asleep. Uh, supporting the incredible work of the Sir David Martin Foundation. So to start the night, let's start, as I think all great Australian events do, in a spirit of reconciliation. I'd like to acknowledge the land that we're on, the, uh, the Gadigal, the traditional owners of that land, the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation. And special, especially tonight, I love this, we have a welcome to country, Uncle Michael West, is with, with us from the Metropolitan Land Council, uh, New, New, New South Wales Indigenous Chamber of Commerce, to give us a welcome to country. So, Michael, come on up. Welcome us. Thank you. I'd like to say, Bujari Gamarua, Gadigal Iora. Good day and welcome to Gadigal and Iora Land, where we are here. And um, I think it's very important that we do have the services to support people when they're going through difficult times. I think society should be judged by that and having uh, wraparound services on many levels for people. And we have had a couple of difficult years, haven't we, the last few years. Um, where we are here, obviously, is the land of the Gadigal. Uh, does anybody know what a traditional canoe is called in Sydney? No. Nawi, Nawi. Imagine getting in a Nawi there, paddling across to the other side of the coat hanger. That is a Camaragal over there, the suburb of Camaray is named after. Imagine paddling around out there. If it was at night, like it is now, there'd be little fires in it. And obviously, um, it's not only men, but women would be in those uh, canoes, Nawis. And they would be fishing. And do you know there's a, a representative of a, um, an actual sculpture that's just above the opera house down there? Have you seen it? the white sculpture when you're at the Opera House and look back on the lawn. That is uh, in the shape of a Gadigal woman's fishing hook made from a shell. So that's what that big sculpture is. It's quite big. When you get a chance, have a look at it. It's very beautiful. And imagine, as I said, turning left, heading inland, paddling along um, in the beautiful Nawi, and you look to your left after you go past Gadigal, you would see Wongal. That would be Wongal there. And if you look to your right as you're going along, you would see Walla Madigal, and that's where Benelong's resting. Um, Benelong, partner of Barangaroo, a strong Camaragal woman. And if you keep going, you eventually hit Barra Madigal, Barra, Barra meaning eel. And there's a beautiful little island off of Belmain. Does anybody know of that island, what it's called? It's got two different names. Traditional name is, is Memel, M-E-M-E-L. It's also known as Goat Island, but it's called Memel as its traditional name. Um, it's the eye of the eel. So there's a whole creation story of Sydney Harbour and the waterways being created by a giant eel, and that eel is now resting there with its eye. And those five clans and other Sydney clans would meet on there, and um, it is being returned to the land council, a very important place. 
And um, as I said, we've had a couple of difficult years. It's important we do take a moment silence to pay respects to our ancestors, uh, pay respects to those we've lost the last few years as we're going through this pandemic. Because remember, they're not just statistics, they're people who have their own dreams, their own aspirations, uh, their own names, belonging to family, belonging to community. So it's important that we be better citizens, um, get into the other side and, and not only be better Australian citizens, but better global citizens, I think, is what we need to be. And we need to pay respects to Mother Earth. Mother Earth provides us with everything we have in our society. And um, we need to care for, care for country. We haven't been doing a great job, um, but we need to do that. And also reflect your journey here right now and pay respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander tradition owners, elders and custodians of the past and present for looking after a wonderful country and the spirit of country that we all enjoy. So if we have a moment's silence, thanks to pay respect and to reflect our journey, thank you. We have three beautiful waterways, Hawkesbury, Georges and Nepean, which are the aquatic boundaries of our nation. To any of my Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters in person or online, um, we warmly welcome you from your country, your clan, your tribe, your nation. And to all our brothers and sisters, we all do belong to one big mob. And what is that big mob? It starts with a H. Humanity. Human <laughs> what? Not humans. <laughs> Close. Humanity. We all belong to that bit one big mob humanity. Um, we warmly welcome from your, from your family, your community, your neighbourhood, ultimately the country you come from. Think about it. We share this little blue sphere um, floating through the ever-expanding cosmos called Earth. On behalf of Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, our elders and our members welcome here. As I said, it's very important to support people and when they are vulnerable um, and to give them the opportunities... So, no matter what postcode you were born, no matter what gender you identify, the colour of your skin, the shape of your eyes, you should be able to fulfil your dreams and aspirations. That's the society we should have. And um, it's so important that we understand what is, what is our most valuable resource in this country. I'll give you a hint, it's not coal. <laughs> it's people our people and especially our young people coming through, we need to give them the knowledge and give them the skills because they will be the leaders in the future and we need to hand them the planet in a better way is what we should be doing. And um, leadership is so important, I think, the people here. And um, we were just having a yarn about leadership. And uh, what qualities do you think are important with leadership? Humility, compassion, sympathy, empathy, a capacity building of those around you, being able to hear and take it in and, and um, good at communications, understanding that you're part of a team and listening to the science as we have the last few years and the evidence base when you think about it. Because we have been getting through the pandemic using evidence and science and hopefully we can do that with Mother Earth too, looking after her. When you don't listen to the science and evidence, that's when you tell people to inject yourself with bleach. Yes, and we have seen that, haven't we? And it's still shocking to think about that. It's very funny, but it's still shocking. But um, we can all be better. We can all be better humans. We want to be better people, be part of our community, all working and walking together. So on behalf of the Land Council, the Elders, welcome here. Enjoy the night. Um, be generous and also always was, always will be Aboriginal land never ceded. We've got some important conversations about voice, treaty and truth. Um, there are three things that we can always move forward. And um, I've heard if you, someone say, if you don't know, vote no. Isn't that just saying if you don't know, be ignorant? If you, if you don't know, go out and find the facts and learn. I'm not telling you which way to vote. I'm just telling you to be informed and make informed decisions as we should be. Um, always was, always will be Aboriginal land never ceded. Thank you.
Thanks so much, Michael. And yes, yeah, so much of that is, is relevant to what we're, what we're doing here, here tonight. It, I was <coughs> struck by the fact, I think this is the third that we've done. This is now a tradition and we're like vivid, really. It's uh, the third one of these gatherings that, that we've done. And we've managed to do, we did the first one in the year, first year of COVID, as you were, you were saying, Michael. I think we snuck in between lockdowns and the other one. We dodged rampant criminality in the streets, I think, last year. So it's an amazingly exciting event, really. Uh, you know, who knows what will be happening by the time we walk out of the door in a couple of hours. What I do know is that we, we, we will have a terrific night. It's a live crowdfunding event. You're going to hear personal stories of triumph. You're going to learn more about our life-saving youth programs of withdrawal, rehabilitation and aftercare. We've got a great crowd here assembled at the ASX. And we've got an equally amazing group of guests tuning in from wherever they find themselves this Tuesday evening. I'm not even sure where the camera is, but if I'm waving at it, am I waving at it? Hello, camera. How are you? Hello. Hello, China. Are you hearing this? Is that uh, wherever it's going? Great to have you all here. Tonight's event is powered by the Funding Network, TFN for short. It's an Australian-based non-profit that brings people together for good. Now, this hybrid format that, format that we're doing here, you in the room, people online, it can be a little unpredictable if it all goes haywire. Be patient, laugh along with us. I mean, I work at the ABC. <laughs> I know how to deal with things when they go wrong, OK? You know, that's a, a daily occurrence in my little broadcast studio, so we'll be fine. Any issues, if you're online, post them into the chat, and the chat manager will see it and we'll be able to deal with it then. So, let's get tonight started. I'd like to invite Will Martin, Sir David Martin Foundation's chair, to welcome you all this evening. Will. Thank you, James. And uh, welcome. Thank you all for coming. It's fantastic that you're here. It's the third year we've run this event. It has a great energy and... Uh, for that, I attribute most of that to James Valentine, who does this most brilliantly, and I'll thank you more formally later, James. Um, we do this with the great assistance of the funding network, as has been mentioned, and also by the ASX, who give us this extraordinary venue so we can run an event like this at no cost. Um, so if you're from the ASX and you're here, Rob Woods was the one that got us in here when he was on the board a couple of years ago. He no longer is on our board. But if you are here in the room and you're from the ASX, thank you. So connect for youth, there's something about this word connect. Everything we do in the Sir David Martin Foundation is for youth. We define youth as 16 to 24. We do it as the major philanthropic partner of Mission Australia, an Australia-wide organisation looking after social services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They do a lot. And they run two programs called Triple Care Farm at two sites in New South Wales. We help them fund a lot of those programs. To make sure we're guided by a strong youth voice so that we old white people don't just make assumptions and get it wrong, we have established a youth advisory group full of tremendous young Australian people, two of which you'll hear from tonight. The youth advisory group steers us and guides us on issues that are affecting young people, particularly vulnerable young people in crisis. So connection, the connection tonight is strong. Firstly, for those of you that haven't dealt with to David Martin Foundation before, we're giving you an opportunity to connect, to connect to us and with us so we can keep that connection going for years ahead so that hopefully you can keep donating money to us. That would be good. Connection with the youngsters that end up at Triple Care Farm who up to that point are pretty much off the rails completely. The programs they go through at Triple Care Farm help them connect in several ways. Firstly, I think they connect reconnect with themselves. They reconnect with their self-respect for themselves. They reconnect with their own heart, with their own purpose, with their own values, most of which have been lost through a period where they've gone off the rails uh, completely. They reconnect to family. These youngsters are largely estranged from family, having been kicked out because they've been stealing from family so they can support a habit, a drug or other um, alcohol or other drug habit. So they're estranged from family. We help them reconnect to family. For our Indigenous First Nations youngsters who turn up a triple care farm, we'll help them reconnect to country and community. We help all of our graduates reconnect to community. And we help them all reconnect to education, employment, 
and life. And we give them some hope. Tonight you'll hear from three courageous people. They haven't been through our programs, but they understand exactly what this is about. One's representing the Detox Centre at Triple Care Farm, where youngsters go for up to four weeks to get clean. Youth-specific detox centre on site at Triple Care Farm. There's a residential rehab service there for 12 weeks at a time for up to 18 youngsters who arrive. Usually they've come out of the detox centre. They go into residential rehab and that gets them reconnected with themselves and with their colleagues, with their friends, uh, with life and, as I said, with their heart. And then there's six months of aftercare. And while aftercare is just the third six-month chunk, we know from a study that it delivers two-thirds of the value of the whole program. So without aftercare, the continuing continuance of checking in by very, very outstanding social workers, helping these youngsters reconnect with all of those, family, country, education, housing, etc., uh, they would probably end up back off the rails. So aftercare is crucial. You'll be hearing three fantastic stories. James will be asking you to pledge. Uh, I hope it goes well. And I look forward to wrapping it up at the end of the night with a thank you. So. Thank you so much, Will. Yes, welcome uh, tonight. And a special welcome to, uh, to Lady Martin, who will be with us again today. Good evening. Lovely to see you. We are pleased to see you along here, along with your children, Anna and Will, uh, so much a part of the Foundation's legacy. So, Dean, extraordinary work over the years. So let's get to it. As, you've, as Will was outlining, you'll be hearing from amazing presenters. We'll be sharing, sharing personal stories of addiction, the importance of receiving the right help for young people in similar situations, in both getting well and then staying well. We're so thankful to these uh, speakers tonight for sharing these stories that demonstrate the impact of the vital work that's being done in these youth-specific programs. After sharing their stories, we're going to ask for your support. Each presenter will have around six minutes or so to tell their story, and then they'll answer your questions. So if you've got questions, you can pop them into the, the chat area there. You can put them there if you're on, with us online here. Just put your hand up. And don't be afraid. Ask questions. If there's something you want to expand on, if there's something you, you need to know, please ask away. Now, when we've heard from the three presenters, we'll then facilitate a live pledging session as well. And we'll do that here as well as online in the chat. Now, I'll give you more instructions about that when we, uh, when we get to it. It's, it's fun. You may not have been you know, through something like this before. It's not necessarily a very common thing in Australian life to do this sort of pledging. But we think it's great and we think it really works. So you'll, I'm sure you'll enjoy it when, uh, when we get there. So, you ready? Let's meet our first presenter. Lincoln is a passionate young member of the LGBTQIA plus community. He's driven to provide support and create meaningful change for those who are less fortunate. Growing up in heavily drug-affected area, Lincoln has witnessed firsthand the brutality substance abuse can have on the life of a young person and the impact poor mental health can have in perpetuating this cycle. Using this experience, Lincoln hopes to be a driving force in providing support for young people nationally. He's a member of the Sir David Martin Foundation's Youth Advisory Group. Would you welcome Lincoln? This is what I looked like the first time I tried drugs. I would have been about 15 in this photo. My baby face was off the charts and I looked about 12 until I turned 21 and somewhat grew into myself. This is the face of a boy who really doesn't want to do his homework, whose room is a mess, and who wants to spend every waking moment playing video games with his mates. Feel free to have a giggle at it. I know I do every time I look at it. I'm not speaking on behalf of all teenage boys, but I know if you told me not to do something, you would have been met with an acknowledgement that sounded something like a grunt. I was a master at that response. I never planned on trying drugs. I didn't have any set in stone idea that I was gonna show up at my mate's place and get hooked on illicit substances, but it's funny how the world works in ways you don't necessarily plan it. I'm obviously doing much better now because otherwise I don't think I'd be able to stand up here in front of you today and talk about the importance of recovery, but good God, it was hard. 
I don't think I've ever been through anything so difficult. It was torture, mentally, physically, emotionally, the whole shebang. My story isn't unique. There's kids like me all across the country, baby-faced children hooked on hard drugs. Lives ruined because we all took one step off the straight and narrow as stubborn, pig-headed teenagers. Teenagers make bad decisions. That's kind of what they're renowned for doing. But that doesn't mean that we deserve to have our lives written off because we took one step in the wrong direction. <sighs> I don't deserve to have my future ruined because I put something in my body that my friends told me would feel good. The treatment these kids are getting and I receive myself is not appropriate for children. We're taken to facilities filled with patients who have been hooked on substances longer than I did alive. And once we're out, there's no unique support. We're not told we can be something. We're not told we have a future because that's something adults figure out and we are told that we are adults despite the fact that we are undisputably children. That is a child. Even the strongest of critics can argue that we made our own choices, but we are scared. We are vulnerable and we want our parents and we want to be healthy. I would have much rather, rather walk 100 kilometres barefoot over glass than stay there any longer than I had to. And I still have so much to unpack from that time in my life that I'm tempted to just throw away the whole suitcase. That's why the withdrawal program at David Martin Place is so important because the program is designed for 16 to 24 year olds, the same age as I was in that photo and the same age as I am now. It provides a safe and supportive place for young people, for children to detox and break the cycle of addiction. Never before have I seen a program have so much faith in young people who need help. I look at the help these kids are getting and there is not a single part of me that does not wish I got that help. These kids are being given an opportunity to start again and prove to others and most importantly themselves that they are worthy of a second chance. On the other hand, I have to now pay for therapy to try and get over the damage done by another, another type of therapy. It's not a great time. They are being brought step by step through those first hellish weeks with support and backing from people who are going through the exact same thing as what they are going through and trained professionals who deal exclusively with people who are at the beginning of their lives who have taken a wrong step. For kids like me, the withdrawal program makes those first few weeks bearable. With your help, children don't need to be surrounded by adults. We are scared, we are alone and we need an environment that recognises that acknowledges those emotions and tells us that it's okay to feel that way when you look and feel like you have been thrown into the pits of hell. Just like me, substance abuse was just scratching the surface of much more deeply ingrained issues and a $500 donation can help that. A $500 donation provides psychological care on arrival at the farm. It starts the treatment of the illness rather than the symptom. $4,000 funds four weeks of 24-7 nursing for a young person going through the withdrawal program. If you've never experienced it, the best way I could possibly describe withdrawal feels like a flu that's never ever going to end combined with the rage of a thousand suns. My most poignant memory from my time in withdrawal was about two weeks after I'd arrived. I was about 16 and it was two in the morning and I was on my bathroom floor and I was so sick. I was sweating, I was throwing up. I was violently unwell. And I called a nurse into my room and I told her, can you please call my mum? Can you call my mum? I wanna go home. I wanna go to school and I wanna be normal. I just want my mum. And the gauntlet of withdrawal is the hardest part of getting clean. Once I got those first three or four weeks out of the way, it felt like it got better. But I just wanted my mum. 
and $4,000 helps provide for someone who can feel like mum. $16,000 funds four weeks of the withdrawal program. Take everything I've just told you about myself, all of the pain and suffering that I went through and the turmoil this put my family through. My kinder age sister crying in our living room when she realised her big brother was just a shell of the person that he used to be. My parents sobbing on the couch when they realised that their boy was just as broken after that treatment as before he went in it. $16,000 can change that story. It doesn't have to be like that and that's all I can ask of you. I've stood up here and showed you the most vulnerable parts of my life. All I ask in return is that you do it for us. Please do it for that boy that you looked in the eyes before because it can be different. That's oh, great. That's great. Well done. Oh. Well done. <laughs> Will you stay there? I'll run that over here. There's a lot of love there. <laughs> well done. How hard is oh. that? It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we can only appreciate the gratitude that we have for you having the courage to share that story. Is, is immense because without you sharing that story, we we don't know. You know, I haven't I haven't lived that. My I, <laughs> that hasn't happened to my kids. So, the fact that you do that, you know, that's what that applause was for. Was to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. In the in the emotional you know powerfulness of that, let me just clarify, you didn't go to. To the farm. That's no, not where you went. No, you ended I, up in an adult facility. Yes, I was in an adult facility. I was an inpatient for the full 90 days. Um, towards the end, I was given leave to go to school. I was in year 10. Um, but, yeah, I went through the ringer. Yeah. I yeah. almost didn't make it. And this, this is the problem with so many areas. We don't have the right facility for the right people. It's not designed for people who have so much ahead of them and just need help finding their way yeah. again. Yeah. When did you first see here? When did you first find the Sir David Martin Foundation? Um, it actually came up on my Instagram stories. I was <laughs> just, <laughs> just scrolling through. What a young through. people way to find things. I know, really. I know. <laughs> Um, it was scrolled through my Instagram stories and there was a position advertised on the youth advisory group and yeah, I was, I read about it, I looked at what it was into and yeah, it was something that I hold very close to my heart, obviously. Oh, so that's anything. how you've come into it. You didn't have previous experience with no, it. No, no. I, I read group. about the, the foundation and then went, yeah, this is, this is something I yeah, can throw myself yeah. into. And I, I mean, I'm going to ask why. In some ways, it's obvious why. But why do you think this is a good, one, good one for you? Why, why, why is that a good fit? Um, as much as I can stand here and say that I made it, I had a lot of mates who did it. I lost a lot of friends who are either still going through addiction or trying to get their lives back on track, or who just didn't make it. There's kids I grew up with whose yeah. funerals I went to when I was. 16, 17. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's something that I think is incredibly important because it's, you know, speaking on from someone in Victoria, I come from a part of the state that, you know, makes up a third of the land area of Victoria and we are just so heavily ravished by drugs and it just starts so, so young, obviously. Yeah. And so it's, it's so important. Yeah, yeah. Anything you'd like to know? Anything you want to bring up? Anything you want to share? Anything you want to ask? Lincoln. I mean, I feel like he shared. <laughs> you know, I feel like he's told us his story. It's pretty clear why he's here. It's pretty clear what he sees as the power of, uh, of the Sir David Martin Foundation and, and the farm. It's pretty, it's pretty clear. So, Lincoln, I think fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, let's take a look at our second program tonight for uh, looking at the work of Triple Care Farm. Jess is a graduate commercial lawyer who's passionate about the many social and political issues affecting young people today. Given her background in law, social science and criminology, Jess is a strong believer in supporting models that treat addiction as a public health issue instead of as a criminal one. She resonates with the work of Triple Care Farm as it provides a holistic rehabilitation service that focuses on how young people suffering from addiction can re-enter into society in a sustainable and meaningful way. Jess is also a member of the Youth Advisory Group. Jess, come on up. What if, what if you had a tough upbringing and had to move out of home at the age of 17? What if you had mental health issues and didn't have the tools to navigate your teens and early 20s? What if your only solace was unhealthy coping mechanisms that eventually evolved into substance abuse? What if your final wake-up call was a trip to the ER because you attempted to take your life as a result. This is a story of a young woman who we'll call Lyndall before she embarked on her rehabilitation journey. Lyndall, who is the same age as me, was considering suicide until a doctor recommended Triple Care Farm. It's also the story of many young people that I worked with in community legal centres. Although drug and alcohol addiction has not affected my life personally, I saw firsthand how addiction can send young people into a spiral of shame and decision making. It's like a rock that hits a body of water. And what are the ripple effects? Homelessness, unemployment, jail time, and in the most serious of cases, suicide attempts. I first got involved with the Sir David Martin Foundation when I attended this very event last year. We heard from a strong young woman named Claire about how the foundation and Triple Care Farm radically changed the course of her future. I also heard a similar story from Lyndall who described the farm as powerful, transformative, not like any other experience. Tonight, I'd like to share the two things that stuck out to me when learning about the work of Triple Care Farm and ask for your help in ensuring that this program can help change the lives of many more young people in crisis. Firstly, what sets Triple Care Farm apart from other rehab services? Triple Care Farm has low barriers to entry. To apply, participants need to be aged between 16 and 24. Their addiction must include daily or near daily use of multiple drugs, and they must be Australian citizens. That's it. You don't need to be from a certain postcode, you don't need to have a certain financial background, nothing. You just need to be willing and able to make a change in your life. The second thing that sets Triple Care Farm apart is how it sets up young people to have a bright future. During the 12 week program, participants are given the tools and skills that they need to make sustainable, meaningful change. This includes counselling and treatment services, sports and recreational facilities, tertiary and vocational education, and sports and other recreational activities and living skills. Lyndall shared with me that one of her favourite parts of the farm were working with the farm animals and that she got to live with and care for, and how it was a major part of her therapy and rehabilitation. By reconnecting young people with education, job and living skills, they are given independence and this has incredible impact. 
Lyndall has completed her second, uh, her certification two in community services, and she hopes to learn the necessary skills to help people like the staff of Triple Care Farm helped her. Lyndall has also learnt the importance of asking for help. This is Lyndall's second time through the Triple Care Farm program, and upon reflection, knew that she needed more time and support in order to fulfil her rehabilitation goals. And how powerful is that? It's a massive change for someone who at one point felt so low and hopeless that she felt like she couldn't ask for help and wanted to take her life as a result. Tonight, you have the chance to ensure that this program can help lots of young people. You can be assured that the young people of Triple Care Farm are powerful, driven, ambitious kids, like me, like your own children. Some of them have just been dealt a tough hand or have made a couple of clouded judgments. Your help tonight is critical. For every $2,500 we can donate tonight, you can help one young person through recreational and other um, sports and fun activities for them, like the Creative Arts Program. If that's a bit above your budget, $500 can help someone through tertiary education and certificate two training. And with your generosity, if we're able to hit $30,000, we can help five young people through our education program. Help stop the ripples in the pond. Been to Triple Care Farm? You've seen it? Uh, no, I unfortunately haven't. Um, we're hoping to go at the end of this year for graduation, right. so we can meet um, some of the participants this yeah, year. Yeah. But got to meet with Lyndall um, and learn about the farm. Yeah, yeah. So tell me something of the process of the Youth Advisory Board. What's how does that work? What kind of things do you do? Yeah, so similar to Lincoln, I saw it on a LinkedIn post. That's my social media right, of choice. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I'm I... am hoping the next person found it on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> we have the full set. <laughs> um, but yeah, my previous work was with community legal centres and more not-for-profit work. And when I moved into the commercial law space, I thought I still wanted to keep those community ties. So mm. um, the youth advisory group seems like a really great way to influence and help an organisation and kind of give that youth voice. Um, so I joined um, and I really, again, believed in the work because it's, it's one of the only foundations that I've come across that has such a holistic rehabilitation yeah, program. Yeah. And what, what does the board do? Do you meet once a month? Do you, you know, go and get, get information? How do you have... Yeah, so we, we meet quite regularly. we have um, able to have a face-to-face -face meeting today and yesterday, which is really exciting because we're all spread across mm. the country. Um, but we help, um, you know, with campaigns and giving a youth voice to campaigns like the... Sir David Martin's um, Winter Foundation appeal, um, and then you know give social media kind of advice, um, and we're planning a couple of exciting things for the next year. So that yeah. keep yeah. an eye out on yeah. your social medias. Yeah. <laughs> and you're obviously feeling heard, right? You, the, the board is being the same. yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. So um, yeah, working with the foundation staff has been amazing, um, and you know having a good mix of people on the on the group that have a lived experience, like a wonderful Lincoln. Um, and also people like myself that work in the space. We've also got Sarah in the room who's got more of like an academic background. Um, so lots of great perspectives. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, terrific. Anything you'd like to know further from, uh, from Jess? Either here in the room or online, if there's any questions coming in there. Just raise a hand. Happy, nothing online? Excellent. Jess, you did so well, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker tonight is Amanda. She's an experienced private wealth advisor and a proud committee member of the Shaw and Partners Foundation. In February 2007, Amanda reached out for help and is now just over 16 years sober. And during that time has witnessed many other people break free of the cycle of addiction and substance abuse and experience life in a way that they never thought possible. Amanda knows firsthand that recovery from addiction is complex and that one of the key determinants of long-term success is feeling understood and supported to maintain the positive changes and overcome the challenges that arise. The aftercare program is a crucial part of the treatment for young people 
and supports them as they transition back into the community after treatment, re-engage with family and begin new pathways towards education and employment. So would you welcome Amanda. Jails, institutions and death. These are the possible consequences of addiction left untreated. By the time I was 28, I could hardly stand the sight of myself. I was so full of shame, fear and self-hatred about the trail of wreckage I was leaving in my path due to my addiction and the pain I was causing my loved ones. What started as something fun one Saturday night, as a cure to my lack of self-confidence and lack of self-esteem, my solution became the problem. I wanted to die. In my darkest days, I thought I would be dead before I was 30. I'm 44 now, so clearly something changed. I hated that I could not fix myself, but I will always be grateful that I was broken and desperate enough to reach out for help to start my recovery. I'm standing before you at over 16 years from those really dark days because of the support and help I had and still have now. Hi, Mum and Dad. I heard 12 really powerful words in early recovery. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know. And I need help. Asking for help is hard, and this is why we're here tonight, to ensure that young people with substance abuse problems can ask for and receive the help and support that they need. Of course, the number of young people needing help is exponentially higher than the number of treatment, treatment beds available in facilities, but we can't throw up our hands and say, it's too hard. As you've heard from Lincoln and Jess, withdrawal and rehab are hard work, but they help someone see the cracks where the light comes in. Figuring out what to do after residential treatment can be overwhelming though. It's frighteningly easy for a young person's recovery to be derailed when they leave residential facility if they don't have a clear plan about what they're gonna do next. And more importantly, the support to navigate the pathways that are ahead of them, new pathways that were never imagined. So, how does aftercare solve that problem? Aftercare is a natural progression from residential treatment. It's a tailored six month program that provides crucial period of support underpinning a brighter future for, young, for a young person, free from the pitfalls of addiction and offering hope, safety and opportunity. This is vital because the challenges begin once the young person leaves the safety and security of Triple Care Farm. Those are direct quotes from the uh, autumn 2023 impact report. Not my words. Aftercare is personally tailored and it means that participants have both practical and emotional support to figure out their next steps, which could be things like finding a safe place to live, exploring new pathways of education and unemployment, building new, building new support networks and finding new hobbies and pastimes that don't involve substances. I want to make a key point here about aftercare though. It's not a one size fits all solution because there isn't one. However, the aftercare program allows young people to connect to that part of themselves that wants to thrive, not just survive. And it allows them to do it in their own way with the personalised support of a youth worker. In my experience, connection is an antidote to addiction. And if you have someone to help you make those connections, take those leaps of faith, dare to dream, then you are more likely to succeed. So what do you think might be some of the outcomes of aftercare? Well, 83% of participants are in stable housing and engaged in education, vocational training or employment, or a combination of the three. There's an 87% reduction in chronic drug and alcohol use. 100% of participants have strong support networks and have learned new strategies and skills for coping with their new lives. 100% of participants setting, are setting goals and achieving things they never knew they could achieve, thought they could achieve, or even knew existed. I made that last one up, but I'm able to speak from experience and say that's what's happened for me. I have a life I never imagined I'd have. I have an amazing family, I have strong relationships, a career, my health, goals for the future, and the humility to ask for help when I need it because you can't save your ass and your face at the same time. 
Jess referred to ripples in a pond earlier and to borrow that phrase from her, the benefits of aftercare on the participants go far beyond the impacts of the participants because breaking the cycle of addiction impacts families and communities in a really powerful way. I'm often reminded that I only get to keep what I have, my life and my recovery, by giving it back, by sharing my hope, experience and strength with people who need it. I'm in a really powerful position. I'm a living example of someone who changed their life for the better with the love, help and support of many others. So for all of you here tonight, I invite you to support the aftercare program, to give these young people the opportunity to live a life like mine, where, in, where my worst days in recovery, and there have been a few, I'm a work in progress, will always be better than my very best days in addiction. So I'll start with $300. I know what $300 bought me a few, bit over 16 years ago, pain and misery. But what do you, what does $300 donation buy tonight? Two weeks of aftercare. Two weeks doesn't sound like a lot, but for someone who's navigating their new life, those first two weeks can help them sit through the emotional discomfort rather than go out and make choices that perhaps might not be the best choices to make. $4,000. Give someone six months aftercare. You're changing someone's life. And, more importantly, hopefully avoid, this, avoid the cycle of re-entry into residential treatment facilities. I have friends who are in their 20s now and they refer to themselves as frequent flyers um, because they've been in and out of residential rehab so many times since they were teenagers. Um, Finally, reiterating what I said about the far-reaching impact of breaking the cycle of addiction. $40,000 provides a safety net for 10 young people to explore new ideas and a new life after treatment with a, new work, with a youth worker by their side. Perhaps not by their side, literally, but a phone call away. Tonight, you can help place a young person in the position to transform their life and be a positive influence in the life of their loved ones and the wider community. So give generously. And the financial advisor in me says tax time is coming up. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't have to walk around. You can stay there. I'll wander around a little bit if you like. But I was ready to Fantastic. walk around. Now, of course, if we take away nothing else from tonight, we will take away... You can't save your ass and your face at the same Correct. time. What a fantastic expression. I, I'd never heard that. Just, just explain what you mean by that. Okay, so... On the microphones. Oh, right, okay. So, again, this was one of the things I... which was explained to me when I first came into recovery, that if you are too proud to ask for help, then you will fall on your ass. Yeah. Um, you're trying to save your face, but you're going to end up... Being in a lot of pain, so to speak. So that's where, I mean, I have a lot of those sort of sayings. Some of them are probably not really fit to say. In oh, no, please. Form. Please. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, like Lincoln, you're giving us the, the valuable insight of the hell of it. Yeah. And the, the lack of what, what was there. Like, I mean, you were older, so, yeah. you know, maybe the, whatever you found eventually worked. But it means you've looked at what is being provided here and at, at Triple Care Farm and going... That's what's needed. You, you couldn't understand it. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I, as I said, I've got friends. I've been clean for quite a long time. But I have friends who, you know, they're in 16, 17, 20. They're young. Um, and as Lincoln was saying, putting... And I also, for a long time, used to go and speak at rehabs. Putting a young person in a room with, I don't know, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds, they're not exactly going to be on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. And as Lincoln said, you know, it's... It's having a youth-specific program. You're with your own people. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, a 16-year-old hanging out with a 60-year-old, but they don't have the same life experiences. They don't, they don't communicate the same way, which is probably key. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, um, yeah that's what I've observed. Yeah. That but also the importance in this program of the aftercare. Oh, God, there's yeah. someone there after it. A lot of the adult stuff is just rehab. That's it, now you're back mm. with your family or back yep. whatever. This is a whole other thing. Well, I, for me, and I, I didn't go through aftercare, but I can tell you absolutely that I'm still standing here because of the support that I've received and that I still have. There's no way I could do this on my own. Um, you know, I think I've, when I've, I've been... 
I got involved with Sir David Martin Foundation uh, a few years ago with abseiling, which is much less stressful than this, um, <laughs> abseiling off a building. Um, and, you know, I just, I remember reading about it and thinking, you know, that is such a great, the wraparound program, you know, so there's withdrawal, there's residential, and then there's aftercare. There's not just, okay, you do this bit, then off you go, see you later, you're on your own. And that is, I've seen people come out of residential rehab facilities and be like, what's next? What do I do? Who, how do I, I can't do this on my own. And someone says, oh, well, go and see that person. Go and see, they don't have one person to ring and say, I'm having a really crappy day. Yeah. Like, I, I, I can't make any decisions because my brain is so full of crap. Yeah. Can you please help me? Yeah. And that's what aftercare program provides. Yeah, and the, the life yeah. has been one thing and you need something to replace that life, you know, yes. whether that's just, you know, fitness or it's fun. a job or, or fun. fun. Find a new way of fun. Any questions for Amanda? Yes. So this one, for me, I can look back and go, I wish I wasn't too scared to ask for help. I wish I wasn't thinking that I knew everything, because I did. It's like Lincoln was sharing, you know, it's like you're a teenager, you're a young person, you know everything. Everyone else is wrong. And if you ask for help, you're admitting you have a problem, which is shameful, so on and so forth. So for me, the key is always going to be ask for help. There are no stupid questions. Like, there's only stupid people on the other side. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, asking for help. Always. Yeah. Terrific. Uh, yes, anything else? Feel free? No? Amanda, you've done a fabulous job. Oh, Go abseil! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, terrific. Fantastic stories, right? Great. I mean, that's the sort of, you know, real insight. That's why we come, we come here, you know, in whatever position, whatever moment we find ourselves sharing stories, we're, we're enriched. But when they're this real, when they're this pertinent, it's, uh, it's an incredible moment. So I hope you got that as well. Now, we're going to work together to raise some much-needed donations to fund all of this work. I'm going to ask our presenters to leave the room, take a well-earned break... Go, enjoy yourselves. We can start our pleasing session. Lincoln, Jess, Amanda, thank you so much. Well done. And so then we do the work here and we do some pledging and then we bring them back and it's the, the reveal moment's great where we show just how much we've raised and what we've achieved here tonight. Now, I'm going to explain how the pledging is done, but the, uh, the drinks waiter's coming around to uh, top up if you like, and um, so the, um, you know, that you can get some refreshments right now, so come on down and do that. If you're at home, have a quick stretch, put on another episode of Bluey for the kids so you don't miss out on the best part of the night, and uh, stay with that, although Bluey's only 10 minutes, so maybe something a little longer, you know, The Godfather, something like that will probably, uh, probably keep them amused. <laughs> now, we're going to seek pledges for each program, for one at a time. An advocate for each program is going to give a short testimonial and uh, kick off the pledging, then it's over to you. And we'll go through each program in the same order that they were presented, Lincoln, Jess and Amanda. So save your pledge until that point. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you'd like to give mainly to aftercare, wait till we get to aftercare and give then. We also come back and just do a quick second round. So if you waited for aftercare and then by the time you got there, you thought, you know, I really would have liked to to give more to the, uh, to the rehab program, well then we'll be back to, uh, to help you do that as well. We want to raise as much money as we can, as fast as we can. A quick pledge is a good pledge, so we'll be whipping through it. As our financial advisor, Amanda, Amanda said, it's all tax deductible. There is no upper limit. Um, so all pledges, large and small, will, um, will make a huge difference. Can I say a huge thank you, thank you to the Maple Brown Family Foundation, Kangarooby Farm, and Margaret and David Mullen. Now, they've provided a total of $30,000 in matched funding tonight. That means you're going to see, for the first $10,000 of each project, it gets doubled. So you give $100 first up, that becomes $200, because of the, Ma the Maple Brown Family Foundation, 
Kangarooby Farm and Margaret and David Mullen. An applause for them and thank you so much for that generous, generous thing. Now there's, there's several ways you can pledge and this is the, the best way is the first way. Raise your hand. If you're here in the room, you raise your hand, we get a microphone to you and then you say your name out loud and proud and the amount you want to pledge. Now I understand that this is uncommon to you. You are not used to this sort of proud declaration. We, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, largely, Michael, Anglo-Australians. We're a bit reserved. You know, we often mumble, we're a bit shy about the giving. You know, I, I won't do that. I like to be a bit humble, a bit, uh, a bit modest in my giving. We love a public pledge. We think it's a really important, important thing at the funding network. When people see other people give, they give. They give more. You share the joy of giving by doing it. So give it a shot. Have a go. Get the hand up. And let's uh, let and pledge away. The second way to do it is to pledge using your mobile. We've gone all modern. You can do this here in the room or online. If you use your fan, uh, phone to scan the QR code on the screen right now, then that'll give you the details about how to how to do it. And you can order a latte and a couple of tacos at the same time. It's a terrific service we've got going on there. It'll be delivered down, down, down to you. Yeah. So scan the QR code and you can uh, donate in that way as well. If you use the mobile pledging, those pledges will go, we'll see it coming up in the total. So, you know, suddenly there'll be a burst of, you know, $1,000. Oh, good on you. Thanks for doing that. Now, the third way is for the online audience. You just enter your pledge into the chat box and uh, we'll yell them out here every now and again in the room. So, I think it's pretty clear. Give generously by raising your hand. Use the QR code online. Use the chat, okay? So I think we can pretty much get going. You'll get totals as we go through. So we began with the withdrawal program that Lincoln so uh, passionately described for us, a need he so passionately understands. Uh, let's hear from their advocate tonight, Anna Beaumont. Anna, come on up. Hello. It's you. Hi. Thank you. Thanks, James. Children and young people shouldn't be treated in adult facilities. This is true across the board, but it's particularly important for young people withdrawing from drugs and alcohol. We've heard from Lincoln, bless his heart, that adult facilities might even cause harm and trauma. Thank you, Lincoln. Nearly six years ago, David Martin Place was built on site at Triple Care Farm. As everyone else has said tonight, it's youth-specific, purpose-built and residential withdrawal program for 16 to 24-year-olds where they can withdraw from drugs and alcohol in a safe, supportive and respectful environment. There's round-the-clock nursing care, visiting doctors, telehealth doctors, counsellors, and there's even a housekeeper called Ken, who looks after the building and all the laundry, and he makes meals for the young people because they're often really sick when they come to withdrawal. We're very proud of the work that's done at David Martin Place, of the staff and the young people, and I think David Martin, AKA Dad, would be very proud as well. He'd love to see these young people being provided with safety, hope, and opportunity. I encourage you to make a generous pledge tonight. I'm going to kick that off with a start of a $200 pledge. Thank you for coming, and I look forward to seeing what, what happens next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're off and running, and two hundred dollars gets doubled because of the uh, the match funding as well. So who'd like to have a shot at pledging in the room? Who's going to follow up on Anna? Raise a hand and let me know what you'd like to give to help out the withdrawal program. You're mumbling to one another. I love it when the family starts to starts to chat. Yes, sir. Wait for the wait for the microphone. We'll get it get it to you, and uh, then you can uh, pledge away so everyone can can hear. Yes, a thousand dollars from the millets. A thousand dollars from the millets. Thank you, millets. One thousand dollars from millets. Thank you so much to help out on that very important, the initial entry point, the withdrawal program. Yes, what else do we have? I'm seeing a hand going up over here. Yes, sir, we wait for the mic. And yes. Uh, $5,000 from Nick. From? Uh, the Hamiltons. From the Hamiltons? $5,000 from the Hamiltons. Thank you, Hamiltons. Fantastic. That's excellent. That's wonderful. 
that's, uh, you know, as they were describing, I think at various points, you know, like that's 10 people through the program, that sort of stuff. So that's excellent. Fantastic. Yes, who else would like to, uh, to help out in that generous way? If you're using the mobile, fantastic. I'm not looking at the, uh, at the uh, sum so far. What have we got? We haven't got anything so far. No. <laughs> Oh, 12,000, there you go, 12,000. So there must be people using the mobile and doing stuff, uh, stuff at home. Got some proxies? Yeah. Let's get some, a microphone down the front here and uh, see how we go. It's very good. You're going to get your step count on beautifully tonight. So ter terrific. Yes, Will? Uh, a proxy pledge from someone well known to many of us in the room. He's uh, one of our boogling golf mates, <laughs> Stephen Davies, a.k.a. Davo. Uh, so Stephen and Suzanne would like to pledge $1,000 to this. Thank you so much. Very good. Excellent. Any further proxies in the front while we're here? Here we go. One more from uh, Anna. I have a proxy pledge from myself. From $500. Look at that. And while I'm I don't here, think that's a proxy pledge. Uh, I think that's you. Okay. <laughs> it's a pledge pledge. I also have a proxy pledge from Tracy Norman for $4,000. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much to Tracy Norman and to Anna. Again, absolutely wonderful. Any further? You're looking... Looking keen? Yes, the Woods Five. My lordy, very generous. $2,000. Fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Any others? Oh, yes. On behalf of Shelley Marsh, I would like to say that she is donating $1,000. Thank you, Shelley. Good on you. <laughs> Wonderful. Right, yeah, what about you know, those hiding up the back there? Have you all used the mobile? Or Yes, here we go. What have you got? Yes, the Hennessy family would like to donate $1,000, please. Thank you, the Hennessy family. Good on you. <laughs> Marvellous. Yes, sir. Uh, Emma and Andrew Maple Brown, $5,000. $5,000. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. That is a marvellous total right there. I'm seeing a hand go up in the middle. Here we go. Yes, sir. Uh, $2,000 from the Sharp family. From the Sharp family. Thank you so much. $2,000. Excellent. See, it's really like the best Sydney auction you can go to, isn't it? You know, we just keep giving money. It's got all the right energy and you don't feel disappointed at the end. Uh, yes? And $2,000 from the Mafarage family as well. From the Mafarage family. Thank you so much, sir. $2,000. Excellent. Excellent. That's marvellous. $33,000 raised for the withdrawal program so far. Anything, anything further? Turn a hand. A couple more, Will? Yep, a couple more proxies down the front. The what? I can't actually hear you. Can we go back to the code? So that can... Oh, they want the code? Okay. Uh, I'll see if we can do that. Let's get some proxies, yes. Uh, no, it's not a proxy. It's, um, it's Will and Helen Martin from Waterline Leadership. would like to give $250 here only if at least two other people who might be members of Royal Sydney Golf Club... <laughs> right. ...would match... I see. So you suspect that there might be other members I of Royal Sydney be. Golf Club who could easily be able to afford two fifty. You know, that's just a, that's just a round at the nineteenth, isn't otherwise, it? Come on. Otherwise, I'm putting the wallet away. Otherwise, it's all going away. Might we have another member of the Royal Sydney? Perhaps up the back there. There's a couple up the back there, looking enthusiastic. Yes, sir. Uh, one thousand dollars from the Whitehead family. And is that are you part of the Royal uh, City Golf? Yes, yes. We yes, are. you are. Okay. I don't. I th I'm going to take that as one round of two fifty. Uh, do we have one more? Yeah, we've got another one. The Stenning family has already donated five hundred, but we'll put another two fifty. Another two fifty. And thank you so much. Very, very good. Well done, Will. And, well, a and a that'll be an interesting foursome on Friday if, uh, on Saturday if that uh, that comes up. And yes? make it a four ball um, and five hundred dollars from Finlay's. Fantastic. Excellent. Well done. Marvellous. That's very good. Now, I think we... Now, sorry, can I just clarify? Were you saying we can't put the QR code up again? Oh, we did? Did it go up again? Oh, that's great. Did, did everybody get it? We're okay? All right. Marvellous. Um, yes, Kristen. I've got multiple mics. <laughs> Are any of the mics? There you go. There. This one will go. Um, Helen is joining us from Ireland, and she'd like to pledge $500. Thank you, Helen, from Ireland. <laughs> Miss you. Marvellous. Excellent. All right, anything else for the withdrawal program? As I say, we can come back, and yes? Another Royal Sydney member is Lady Martin 250. Lady Martin 250, thank you so much. That's very good. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you, Lady Martin. Marvellous. All right.
Well, what we might do is we might say, that's an excellent amount, well done, thank you. We'll go on to the other programs and then we can come back and just see if there's anybody uh, wants to help out any further for the, uh, for the withdrawal program. Fantastic, thank you. Look at that, $30, $38,000. That's marvellous. All right, so now let's do the rehabilitation program. Jay Shen will be their uh, advocate. Jay, you ready? Come on up. An anonymous donation of $10,000. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Anonymous. Aren't you wonderful? Thank you, Anonymous. We think you're terrific. Jay, come on up and uh, help us out with the rehabilitation program. Wow, what a wonderful evening. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I'm sure that everyone in this room were moved uh, by the stories that we heard um, from Lincoln, from Jess, and also from Amanda. Um, I just want to say this is my first event for Sir David Martin Foundation, and it's a great honour to be here. Um, some of my team members and friends are also in the room, so thank you for coming to support this great cause. Um, I guess what resonated really with me and why I'm an advocate for the Resi Rehab uh, program is the fact that it's more than just about getting well, it's also about staying well. And I think the stories that were shared by Jess for Lyndall highlights just the importance of the piece of the puzzle that the rehab um, program plays overall. It's a small part, but it's also a very critical part. So that's just from my perspective. Um, I welcome you all to uh, continue the generosity that's been shown um, for the withdrawal program and uh, remember Amanda's great advice, which is it's nearly tax time, so please dip in and uh, donate generously. Yeah. And I'd li like to kick off the pledge with $200, but please feel free to competitively um, exceed my pledge. <laughs> Thank you, Fantastic. All right. Let's see what we've got. To help out with uh, rehabilitation, I'm sure. There's, uh, there's plenty going on. You, you, the pledging's good, isn't it? Hey, it's fun. You know, you get a vibe going in the room. Fantastic. If anybody else has got any other challenges, like the Royal Sydney Golf one that uh, Will so, uh, you know, cleverly came up with, if there's others you know in the room or you suddenly think there's a way in which, you know, you could uh, encourage some giving, go right ahead. Yes, I think you're in first again. I'm, I'm going to challenge because I know Helen did this when she was here. Anybody else who's got Irish heritage has to match my $500. My surname is Hennessy. Okay. <laughs> so any other Irish heritage people, people of Irish background, who've, uh, who would like to match the, the Hennessy $500? Coming down the front here, yes? Let's, let's see how we go. Fantastic. Thank you. It, it, this is this is this is very good. I'm liking that you're keeping this going, Hanno. Um, I was a Haggerty before I was a Martin. We'll meet you on the 500. Fantastic from the Haggertys of of County Cork of Kilcare of no idea. <laughs> You'll claim one of those whenever you get there, Galway Bay, wherever it might be. Any other Irish? Yes, Anna. I'm not Irish, I'm afraid, but I've jumped in. Okay. Um, Anna and Michael Beaumont, five hundred dollars. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna and Michael Beaumont. Fantastic. Excellent. While the mics there, are there proxies or anything you want to cover while we're there? Fantastic. Thanks, Will. Uh, yes, proxies. The Woods Fire Foundation have popped up again. Two thousand dollars here. Thank Fantastic. you very much. Thank you. Helen would read this out, but it's Tracy Norman, three thousand dollars. Wow, fantastic! Thank you, Tracy. That's great, brilliant. Good on you. Absolutely wonderful. All right, further pledges. Are you waving with the mic? There we go. Up the back. Yes. Yeah, we'll play, Dad. Uh, I think you knew that we had Irish heritage, so uh, the Hennessy family will donate another thousand dollars. Sorry, say that again. There was how much was it? I know a thousand. Another thousand from from further from other generations of Hennessy. Is that what we're up to? <laughs> fantastic. Very good. That's uh, very well parented there, obviously, as well, so... <laughs> yes? From Cornwall, the Millets, $1,000. From Cornwall, the Millets, $1,000. Excellent. I think anybody else that likes a, a, a pasty, 
you know, a, a Cornish, you know, some, some, as a fish recipe, should donate as well. Yes. Uh, not Irish, but Alyssa Rollinson is giving $1,000. Thank Obviously you, Alyssa Rollinson. Fantastic. $1,000. They're but marvellous. Wonderful. Hennessy adjacent. Should be on. Another Hennessy $200. Oh, they're, gee, they're good, those Hennessy's. Certainly showing up a lot of the other families here, I'd say, at the moment, yes. Chris. And I think that Helen has, has heard your wish yes. and is going to match you with $500. She says, right back at you, Hino. I'll match it. And then she's also put something in Gaelic in there that I'm not sure I'm going to try to, uh, really? to read out. Do we but have I may, a Gaelic I may speaker? Give it, I may give it to someone else to say. Okay. Although I have heard it said many times. Really? Yeah. I don't, yeah. Well, well I'll, I'll get a translation okay. so we can put it out there. Yeah, I think, I think swearing in Gaelic would be incredibly offensive here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's satisfying, probably. Probably sounds really insulting when you get it right, doesn't it? It's probably really good. Uh, well, thank you so much. There's somebody from Ireland. Thank you, uh, Helen. That's marvellous. Yes, who else would like to pledge here this evening? Wow, it's just... Uh, that lays from Limerick, $500. Thank you, for the lays from Limerick. Gosh, haven't the Irish done well? I mean, we brought them here in chains, you know? I've done very well. Jay? I think we need to give some competition to the Irish. Um, for people from Macquarie that are in the room, I know you're busy ordering puffer jackets. So, <laughs> for a bit of diversion, um, I'm happy to put up another $100 if I can get two other people from Macquarie to put up another $100 each. Thank you, Nana. Okay. Okay, I'm intrigued with the puffer jacket. Is it cold at Macquarie? Is the... The heating down, ski trip coming up. Staple uniform. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, everybody wants And so is it, you want your Macquarie puffer jacket. I get it. So have we got some Macquarie people to, uh, to match the 100? Yes? Mike is working. Um, there you go. So I'm Nana, and I'll pledge 100 with you, Jeff. Fantastic. Good on you. One more. Yep, I'll go with you, Jeff. Um, my name is Mitchell. I'll pledge 200. So it's 200, fantastic, good on you, that's great, that's great. And you'll go to the top of the order for the puffer jackets, I understand, that'll uh, I'll organise that, uh, that tomorrow. Yes, right up the back there, I think. Yeah, no, I'll pledge $100, I used to work at Macquarie, and uh, I'm a member of Wallara Golf Club, the poor man's Royal Sydney, so <laughs> that's from the Duncan family. But a much better, I think a better class of people, really. Uh, that's what I've heard. Fantastic, thank you so much, good on you, sir. Uh, yes, in the, uh, in the middle there. Uh, I'm Julian. I'll, ple I'll pledge $100. Thank you, Julian. Good on you. And yes, sir? $2,000 from the Sharp family. Thank uh, you, the Sharp. And on behalf of my, my mother-in-law, uh, uh, who is Irish, uh, I'll give an extra 500 Oh, fantastic. Good on you. Excellent. That is going to go down well at Christmas. Bravo. Well done. Fantastic. All right. Anything further? Yes. I've got as a bit of light in my eyes, so I can't quite see. But as someone who's ex Macquarie, I'll go hundred dollars again. Fantastic! Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I'm neither Irish nor Macquarie, but um, five thousand dollars from Emma and Andrew Maple Brown. Oh, fantastic! Thank you so much, Emma and Andrew. That's that's great. That's great. That's true. I mean, you don't have to be Irish or from Macquarie to be generous. I mean, <laughs> apparently it does help, but it's not not compulsory. Anna. I have a uh, proxy from Shelley Marsh who's given $2,000. Fantastic. Thank you, Shelley. Excellent. That is going very, very well. $31,567 so far. That's absolutely wonderful. Yes, uh, Kristen, online. Well, let's see if it's... I've got a um, proxy pledge from Andrew Sharkey for $100. And he'd love to have a match. He'd I'm love sure of it. it from someone who's not Irish. Someone who's not Irish. I don't think that's, I don't think that's possible here tonight. Um, doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, yes. Uh, 2,000 from the Davises. Thank you so much, the Davises, 2,000. Do we have a $100 match for, for Andrew? Anyone want to pop in a pop in 100 just because just you found it behind the couch? Yes, sir. Lady Martin, well, there you go. Lady Martin's in for 100. Thank you. Thank you so much. Marvellous. Yes. Um, we're both Macquarie and Irish. We've got Murphy's and Macquarie, so 500. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Excellent. All right, how are we going? Anything else, uh, Kristen? Someone can correct this for me, um, but because I'm going to mispronounce it, I'm going to make an attempt to say thank you 
in Gaelic, which I think is what's posted here. So someone can correct me, but I'll, um, I'll pledge $100 for mispronouncing this in advance. So go rap math agat. Is that how we say it? Close enough? Good Go enough? Okay. Not a got. But yeah, I'm just reading it as That's this. That's Klingon. Someone can, someone can, now someone tell us properly how to say it. Yeah. Um, Helen, don't laugh too hard on mine when you get to this part. Yeah. I think it's either Klingon or Klingon. Orc. I'm not quite sure. It's a, one or the other. She did perfectly. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. The, the, Hennessy's are, the Hennessy's are claiming the most Irish that they're here. So, uh, fantastic. Yes, anything else? Mike disappearing up the back there. Fantastic. And thank you for all those that are using the QR code and the phone. Uh, no, that seems to be about it. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you so much. $34,000 raised there for rehabilitation. That is great. All right. So our final area is for the aftercare program, uh, which we heard from uh, you know, Amanda did such a passionate, passionate uh, speaking on behalf of. The advocate is Angela Holstein. Angela, are you with us? Come on up. Fantastic. Thank you, James. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to Martin and family for all the incredible work you've obviously done for many years. Um, I'm here today as a committee member of the Shore and Partners Foundation. I thought we'd be the only ones with puffer jackets in the market, but clearly not. Um, I'm a long-term friend and colleague of Amanda. We work closely at Shore and Partners. And funnily enough, I feel like I'm always asking her for help on many things, and she's always ready to provide that help. Amanda has been incredibly brave and honest in sharing her story this evening in the hope of helping others who are struggling with similar issues. Amanda is well positioned to speak out about the aftercare program, and she knows full well how vital it is to provide youngsters with the support that they so desperately need at that time. I know in Amanda's case that she is blessed with the most loving and supportive parents a girl could dream of. So many don't have this safety net to fall back on. And aftercare provides the advice and mentoring so vital to a young person as they finish the withdrawal and rehabilitation programs. Without it, the chance of relapse is way too high. We thank Amanda for, a share, for sharing her experience for showing those who are in the depth of despair that there is help out there, there is another way, and we will do whatever we can to give back and look after our young. In support of this incredibly important organisation, I'm pledging $200. Please help these vulnerable youngsters on their journey to a healthy, clean life, and let's break the cycle. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angela. That's uh, fantastic. All right. So who'd like to kick off with the, uh, with the pledging for, uh, for aftercare? Pro you know, it, it, it is the three programs working together that makes this, this work. This is the, the whole point. Take one of them out, doesn't really make, make sense. This is what, you know, we really need a dozen of these facilities around New South Wales. And even then, we'd still only be probably barely meeting the need, really. It's, uh, it's, it's a, a dreadful problem in our world. So... What, who would like to uh, kick off the pledging? Yes. You just did, Ed Ansel. I don't know if you remember that. You were just here. But, uh... <laughs> I've got a list, Dobson. I have, a, I have a, a proxy pledge from one of our committee members, mm -hmm. Andrew Hines, of $500. Thank you, Andrew Hines. Fantastic. I'm not finished. Yep. We have, from Shore and Partners Foundation, we have $10,000. Fantastic. Thank you. Marvellous. Well done. That's great. Um, and... Personally, I would like to make my pledge $500. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. That's great. Excellent. Oh, we get little balloons when we reach $20,000. I didn't realise that. That's very good, isn't it? Uh, well, lovely. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. And from Chester Graham, $500. Thank you, Chester Graham. Fantastic. Thank you. Good on you. He's a dog. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Who else would like to uh, help out? with the aftercare in particular. Yes, from the, uh, the Millet, I think. From the Millet family, $2,000. Thank you, the Millet family. Excellent. <laughs> Quietly generous. Good on you. From the Sharps. From the Sharp family, I'd like to support uh, one person through for six months with $4,000. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Thank you. 
A and on top of that, I'd also like to give another five hundred dollars. And uh, uh, as a lawyer, I challenge any other people with a law degree in the room to match wow. that. Wow. Gee, I don't know. Would there be many with a law degree in the room? Is that is that in any way common? Any other? Anyone else with a law degree yeah, like to got, uh, yeah, like to right. donate? You got me there. Uh, Anthony Cheshire, two thousand dollars. That's matching that. It, it's easy coming from. Oh, there, just there. Right. Thanks so much. Sorry, I couldn't see. It was, it was getting quite mysterious. Thank, thank you. Fantastic. That's very, very. I good. have a law degree, so I have to do five hundred dollars. Thank you. In your name, uh, Mafarage. It's fine. Mafarage, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Excellent. Another five hundred dollars. Any other lawyers, ex or otherwise? $10,000. Wow, fantastic. An anonymous donation of $10,000 and not a lawyer. Wow, I'm look at that. Lawyer. You cannot have a law degree and do quite well. That's uh, terrific. If only you'd known that when you're 18. Eh? Oh, well, there you go. Uh, what else? Who else have we got in the room who'd like to, uh, to help out? And uh, we have some proxies. Let's see what, the, uh, what Will has in the proxies. Oh, sorry, we've got one here first, Will. Oh, okay. Um, I'm Gabby. I'm also a lawyer and $200. Thank you so much, Gabby. Good on you. Fantastic. We've got a mic down on Will now. Terrific. Uh, thank you, James. It's the Woods Five Foundation again. Two thousand dollars to this program. Thank you. And Will and Helen Martin Waterline Leadership. Five hundred dollars. Thank you. And Helen has one here from Tracy Norman, who's been generous throughout. Once again, is donating three thousand dollars. Wow. Thank you, Tracy. That's fantastic. Good on you, Anna. I have a proxy pledge from Anna Cleary, who wanted to come tonight, but then she got sick, for $2,000. Thank Great. you. Great. Good honour. And we you. also have an anonymous gift of $500. Thank you. Fantastic. That's wonderful. <laughs> Excellent. Very, very good. Yes. Uh, Emma and Andrew, $5,000. Thank you, Emma and Andrew. Good on you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that is really wonderful. Look at that. Nearly $50,000 for the aftercare program. Is anybody concerned they'd like to round it up? Anybody find those numbers a little awkward? Just want to throw in 250, yes? We'll get it to 55 and change, so 250, or I can't do the math, but. Yeah, so yeah. whatever it is. Tennessee yeah, family, 200. I'm the same, I think. Uh, 500, make it 500. Make yeah. it 500? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and all right. And then the right. challenge is get it maybe to 56, 57? Oh, $1,000, $1,000? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, so $1,000. <laughs> now, that's good because then we're at $1,000, which takes us up to 56700 whatever it was. So we're back at the same problem, really. Can we round it up to uh, <laughs> 257 So that's good. Anybody want to round it up to fifty six? It's which uh, Do I have an accountant? You know, where's our financial advisors? What do we need to get it to fifty six? How much? 233 Who wants to donate 233 Yes. There you go. Thank you so much, Helen. 233, we're at 56. <laughs> People usually feel more comfortable about that, but we don't have to stay there, of course. <laughs> Having got there, we can, we can move on. Anything further that you'd like to help out? Yes, sir. Hi, so the only member of the Hennessy family not here tonight is uh, my younger brother, Charlie, who's on holiday in New Zealand. Um, so he's going to donate $200. Good on him. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? That's right. That's terrific. He was going to do a heli ski tomorrow, but not now. That's great. <laughs> Well done. Good. That's a, that's, that, that is brotherly love. I'm, I'm verily, very moved. That's, that's marvellous. Uh, fantastic. I think at $56,200, that's fantastic. Excellent work. Thank you. Thank you so much for helping out with aftercare there. Now, just as we're winding up, what we do is we just go back through in case somebody has thought about it, they've looked at what they're doing, they've looked at the tax implications at the end of the financial year and thought, I'll just give a little bit more. Do we have anything more in the room for the withdrawal program? Sitting at 48,517 at the moment. Yes, Kristen. The online audience, um, Jeremy wanted to put in $180. Fantastic. Um, and Didi, we mit missed this. She wanted to match the golfers for $250. Okay, terrific. Excellent. Thank you so much for the withdrawal program. Anyone else like to help out any further for the entry point? Yes, Anna. Oh, microphone, sorry, yep. <laughs> I forgot. They've been so efficient, I just thought it would be there. Thank you. Um, a proxy of an anonymous for $500 and also $1,000 from mum's grandson in Victoria, Sarah and Pat Millier, $1,000. Fantastic. Thank you, much. Thank you so much to the Martin family, as always. Yes. 
We've got a hundred uh, hundred dollars from the Tierneys. Marvelous, thank you. And then I've got another message. Many of the young people, the programs are from are from the LGBTQI plus community, and it and as it's World Pride Month, I'd like to pledge another three hundred dollars. Says Helen um, in Ireland, and she would like to find some matches. Okay, so any further matches? You might like to save your match for. We can do a match on on rehab, right? That'd be all right. But Helen wouldn't mind that, would she? Let's see if we've got anything further for uh, rehabilitation and match Helen's 300 from, uh, from Ireland. Anything further for rehabilitation? Yes, Anna, some pro uh, sorry, I'll just, uh, there's a mic just there. I'll come back to you, Anna. Yes. Yeah, I'm Lauren and li I'd like to match the 300 for the rehab. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you so much. Good on you, Lauren. Um, Anna down the front has some further proxies. I have one anonymous proxy for $500. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right, anything further? Okay, wonderful. Aftercare, anything further for, for there? What a night. Fantastic. Total, $143,000, 514. Well done. Thank you. Thank you to the generosity in the room. Thank you to... Sorry. Oh, one, there's, there's some light in the Sharps. One more thousand from the Sharps for rehabilitation. Good Thanks. on you. Thank you to the Sharps. And Anna, I think you've got a couple more as well. Just down the front, here it comes. Just coming from this side. Here you go. We have the Maple Brown Family Foundation giving $3,000 to Resi Rehab. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And they would like to give to withdrawal and aftercare, but if rehab needs it more, then maybe we can pop it there. Right, okay. Think? And so they have further to give. And these are the people that did the match funding to start with, yes, right? Yes, correct. They've got Very further to give. Family. And you think they wouldn't mind if we popped it onto rehab? Well, they're here. We could ask them. We could ask them. You'd, like, you don't want to, maybe you don't want to identify yourself too much, but let me know if you have any objections if we put the remaining funds onto the rehab. I'm not hearing yeah. anything. I, I heard good. a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Had a good idea. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Excellent. Let's put it into there. And that total is? $7,000. $7,000 onto, uh, onto rehab. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank Anything you. further, Anna? Thank you, Maple Brown family. Thank you so much to the Maple Brown family. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your extraordinary commitment there. That is just wonderful. Look at that. Look what we all did. It's great, isn't it? Fantastic. Well done. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to hide those totals on the screen. We're going to bring our presenters back and we're going to show them what we've achieved tonight. So let's bring back Lincoln and Jess and Amanda. Bring them down wherever they might happen to be. Come on in and let's uh, let them know what, uh, what happened here tonight. Let's see if we've helped them at all. Come on in. Give them a round of applause as they come. Here's Lincoln. Young Jess and Amanda. Come on up. Up you come. It's like sort of, think of it, Lincoln, like a dating game, okay? Right, you're going you're gonna to face uh, the front. We're going to reveal what's going to happen. Jess, you I'm can go sure next there. I'm sure my partner would be very glad to do <laughs> <that>. <laughs> partner would be very glad to do yeah. That's what's going on. So we're going to reveal what's happened. We've been in here happily throwing money at you, okay? Brilliant. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. We've been, I mean, not at you, but at the programs that you spoke so passionately about. So we want you to get the joy of the surprise, okay? So Lincoln, right. are you ready to find out yeah. what we did for withdrawal? Let's see how we go. Tonight, $51,647. Nice. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, do you want to say anything? Um. That money so important for preventing what I had to go through, yeah. and it's just it means a lot. Yeah. Fantastic! Thank you. Well done. That's beautiful. Thank you. Now, Jess, uh, rehab. Let's see how we do. <laughs> Forty-six thousand yeah. three hundred and sixty-seven. Fantastic. Thank you all very much. Um, as Lincoln said, it's going to lots of young people who really need it. So thank you. Terrific. Thank you, Jess. 
Well done. And finally, aftercare. Did we, by this stage, did we care about aftercare? Did we? Let's find out. Bloody well, I hope so. $56,500. <laughs> you guys are going to change people's lives. It doesn't matter which program you donated to, you will change a young person's life. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Well done. Bravo. Off you go. Your work here is done. And thank you so much for, for helping us and for, for inspiring us this evening. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. All right. Uh, excellent. That went really well. Will, you want to come up and say a few words, talk about the impact, what that's going to mean? That's the, uh, the $150,000 or so we raised. Yeah. That's over way too quickly. Seems like I was just up here doing the introduction. Uh, obviously, thank you to so many people, most of all, you all, for your generosity. Um, but can I thank James Valentine? In fact, can I ask you to join me in thanking James Valentine? <laughs> the first time we ran this, uh, there was an underworld shooting event next door to this building uh, in which a man was shot dead. And James was our host in here. And I uh, listened to him in the morning to see if he would refer to this event uh, on ABC Radio. I just wondered if you might mention, I know last night doing the James Valentine's thing, I was at this thing where we raised money for the Sir David Martin Foundation. He didn't, but he said he was nearly killed in a drive-by accident <laughs> in the vicinity. But what that told me was that James Valentine is not doing this for him. He was humbly and is still humbly doing this for us and for others and for them and for these three. So James gives his time to the funding network, humbly, doesn't draw attention to it, doesn't refer to it on the radio, goes below the radar, and I really do thank you for that. It's, it's notable and, and commendable. Thank you, James. <laughs> uh, the funding network, just fantastic. Thank you for all you do. Uh, a great partnership, as is the ASX, a tremendous partnership. And to all of you, it's remarkable um, the way you generously show up and give. Um, and I say this every time, but we know uh, through a study, another study, that the social return on investment for the dollar you give is three to one. So a social ROI on a dollar you give is three to one on the community, on social services, on welfare services, on police services, on the government. All those areas don't need to pay money because you gave one dollar and the return is three times. I think that's pretty remarkable. It means that tonight we've raised, what was the number? 150 something. Let's call that 450 is the return to the community of money that the nation doesn't need to spend on young people who are in crisis. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, if we run it again next year, hope you're here. Uh, thank you for showing up, being generous, uh, being vulnerable, Thank you for your love and your support. Um, thank you, Mum. Did you want to say anything, Mum? Put you on the spot. Yes, thank, you, thank, you. thank you for Mum. Fantastic. As she says, looking after our young people. <laughs> we did a quick interview beforehand to camera and Mum reminded me that when Dad was a Rear Admiral in, uh, in Sydney, he would often go out on Mission Beat with the then Sydney City Mission and would see young people quite literally living in cardboard boxes under bridges and on park benches. And he said, this is not right. In a nation like ours, we should be able to do better. And so when the opportunity came up for him to partner up with the Sydney City Mission and put his name as a banner over a foundation, he did so. Sadly, within a week he was dead and sort of handballed that to mum. This is yours. Mum then set up a board and, and got cracking. Uh, so fantastic work to Susie Martin. Um, and David Martin's name is on it and, uh, and it's his legacy. But thank you for being here and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. Now, if you're online, you can click the green button that's just popped up or you can use a QR code on your screen right now to fulfil your pledge. If you pledged using your phone here tonight, just press log out in the top right-hand corner, it'll show your total and take you to the payment page. 
or you can look for an email from us detailing how you can pay. Uh, we'll also send you a link to tonight's stream so you can share your network, share that with your networks and encourage others to support the uh, Sir David Martin Foundation. If you're in the room, leave the top section of your completed pledge in the designated box as you leave tonight. The Sir David, Man the Sir David Martin Foundation will be updating you on the impact of your support over the next uh, weeks and months. So thank you again, the funding network, the team at ASX, and of course to all of our amazing presenters. So uh, thank you. Now, we do have a door prize. We've got a lucky door prize. Now, unfortunately, if you're online, it's not on your door. Okay, it's only on the door here. Uh, so we have a luxurious lucky door prize. Everyone in the room has a chance to win. This is from Lint. They've donated this wonderful prize as well as gifts for the speakers tonight. So let's have the winner. So we're going to announce the winner of the Lint Hamper lucky door prize. Drum roll, please. I don't know how this was decided, but it goes to Jacinta Orman Ormando. Jacinta Ormando. Oh, who? Me? From uh, ICAP, from ICAP. Well done. Thank you. You get more chocolates than you need. <laughs> you become very popular uh, in, in, in everywhere. Fantastic. Well done. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you again. Bye for now.